In this video, you're going to learn how to create a quiz assignment inside of Google Classroom. A quiz assignment is effectively a Google form, except it has some additional features such as grading. To get started, we're going to click on the Classwork tab at the top. Then from here, we're going to click on the Create button. Instead of Assignment, we're going to select the Quiz Assignment. This should look a little familiar. So for this example, I'm going to give it a title. You will notice that a blank quiz is added to your assignment. If we click on that, it will open up in a new tab as a Google form. This form is similar to other Google forms, except that it has one key feature, which is the answer key. I'll show you more about that a little bit later. To begin, we can start by changing the name of the quiz to something a little more relevant. All questions have a question option and then a type field. And based on the type field, it lets you per prompt the students with different options. So here I'll put in a question and then below I have different options. Uh, beginning here with option one. To add more answers, I can click on add option and then enter in more answers to this question and continue until I have all of my answers. And then we have an option for uh, the other, which would just let them enter in some other options they wanted to. Uh, I don't really want to include that for this question, so I'm going to click the X to remove that. To give the correct answer, you can click on answer key. And from here, you can select which one is the actual right answer. Here, we're going to click platypus, and then you can give it a number of points. So here, I'll just give this 10 points for no good reason. Now, because the type of question is multiple choice, the students can only select one right answer. Another option here that is really neat is the answer feedback. If I click on this add answer feedback option, this gives me a whole separate window. From here, if somebody gives you the incorrect answer, you can give them some feedback to help them understand what they did wrong. You could even include a link to another website or a video explaining the answer more. So here, I'm gonna to try to find a video that explains what a platypus is. And from here, we can link to another video for people to kind of get some extra understanding about their answer. Now that I have my video assigned to it and some information about the incorrect answer, I could also give some feedback for a correct answer and then click on save. So now after they enter their answer, whether it's right or wrong, they'll get some feedback either giving them some corrective information or allowing them just to say great job. After I finish adding my uh, feedback, I can click on done. Once I click done, I'm back onto my question. Another option here is I can click on this toggle here to switch it from not required to required this will make the student answer the question before proceeding next to the required option you'll find an ellipses menu under this menu you'll find a couple more options you can hide or unhide a description field that description is an opportunity to add more instructions or possibly um, just some additional information for them to uh, to use when answering the question. You'll also see an option to go to a section based on your answer. I'm gonna go ahead and enable that. Based on the student's selection, you can put them into a different section of this quiz. It's kind of an advanced feature, um, so I'm not gonna cover it here that much, but just so you know that once you get really good at this and you wanna create some more complex kind of workflows into your uh, forms, you can bounce students around different sections. So I'm going to turn this off for now and I'm going to turn descriptions off for now as well. And the last option under the ellipses menu is to shuffle the option order. Shuffle option will randomize the order of the answers within this question. Now that we've added one question, let's add a second one. You click on the circle with a plus symbol inside of it. That's the button to add a question. If we add a question, it'll default to an empty question as a multiple choice. I'm gonna change this from a multiple choice to a checkbox. Now this will differ from the multiple choice option in that the students can select multiple answers to this question. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a question here. And I'm gonna go ahead and like before, I'm gonna add options. You'll notice that Unlike the previous question, which was circles, these ones are squares. That's kind of a universal way of symbolizing that these are checkboxes that allow you to choose multiple answers, whereas these are radio buttons. These circles are called radio buttons. They only allow you to select one answer at a time so that when you select one, it deselects the other. Like the previous question, we're able to have an answer key. If I click on answer key, I'll see that uh, I have my question. I can assign it more points. I can select which ones are acceptable or true answers. So if I select Robin, Duck, and Ostrich, you'll see that I can have three answers here. Again, I can have answer feedback. Uh, I'm gonna click cancel on this. I'm not gonna add any feedback to this question. And once I'm happy with this, I can click on done. Now we're gonna add another question, but this time we're gonna use the short answer. With this, you can add a prompt just like you would expect. 
but with the short answer they're only allowed to enter in like a short one line text answer you can still do an answer key like before but with this you want to be careful because if the um, if it doesn't match exactly including uppercase or lowercase then it's not going to see it as a correct answer I'm going to add 10 points for this you have the option to mark other answers as incorrect and that makes it much more strict so it has to be one of these two answers in order to get the 10 points. If you leave that unchecked, which I'll show you a little bit later, it will give it kind of a fuzzy answer, um, which allows you to grade it later. After the short answer, we're going to have a look at the paragraph answer. With this, you are able to enter a question prompt and the students are able to enter in a paragraph longer answer. With the answer key, you can give it points like before. You're not able to enter in a right or wrong answer. And under the feedback, you are able to give them just a general feedback after they answer the question. They're not able to, uh, to give a right or wrong with uh, optional links or YouTube videos. Next, we're going to add a drop down question. A drop down question acts a lot like a multiple choice question in that the students can only select one correct answer. Typically, you want to use a drop down for questions with lots of possible answers. For example, a drop down with all of the US states will take up a lot less room and be easier to use than with a multiple choice question. Then, under the answer key, you can assign a point total and select one or more answers that are correct. You can select or deselect by clicking on the option. It'll show check marks showing which ones are selected. Then you can also include answer feedback if they answer incorrect or correct answers like before. And then click on the done button after you've selected your answers. Your form can include a question that is a file upload. A file upload is perfect for art class to submit a picture of completed work. You can upload something from your Google Drive. A file upload question will only work for people who are using Google accounts, which isn't really gonna be an issue if you're working with students in your school. Google gives you this warning to make sure you only share this with people you trust because if people upload files to your computer, that does open you up to downloading bad um, malware, that kind of a thing. So you just wanna make sure you only share this with people you trust. Um, after you've spread the warning, go ahead and click on continue. So here, let me give them a prompt for the student. You can select which types of files you want to accept. So you can be specific, only allow documents, PDF videos and such, uh, or you could just keep it open ended like that. You can control the number of files that they can upload and you can control the size of the files. Um, so generally anything over 10 megs is going to be a really big file and they should probably compress it. Um, I can't imagine people uploading gigabytes worth of information unless they're uploading big massive videos. With the answer key, you can't really give them a right or wrong answer, but you can assign points and then provide them with feedback to take them to other resources or videos and then click on done with the feedback. And that's how you create a file upload question. The next question we're gonna show is the linear scale. With the linear scale, you provide the students with a prompt and then you give them a sliding scale to select from. The lower bound for the sliding scale can be zero or one. The upper bound can be up to 10. And then you can give it the lower bound a label and the upper bound a label. With the answer key, there is no real right or wrong answer, but you can give it a point total and give it feedback like before, and then click done when you're done with the feedback. So let's have a look at the multiple choice grid. The grids are much more complex questions. We can include a prompt to the student. Each row is going to be a question for the student to answer, and a column is going to be one of the uh, options for them to select. So here I'm going to put in some animals for the rows. Each row that I enter here will be a separate question for the students to answer. So in this case, for each of the animals in the row, the students are going to have to select which basic animal type they are. This toggle button here will require an answer for each row, so that require them to answer each question. Under the ellipses menu, you'll see the limit to one response per column. You wanna be careful with this option because if you do that, you might lock it out so the students can actually answer the questions because in this case, I have two animals that are mammals, then you'll only be able to select one mammal from the grid. So you wanna only use this if you only want the students to select each column once. The checkbox grid question is very similar to the multiple choice grid question in that you have rows where each row is a question and columns are the answers for students to select, except with the checkbox grid, the students are able to select multiple answers for each row. 
The last two types of questions you can have are dates and times. Those allow your students to enter uh, date fields or time fields respectively. I'm going to show you a preview of what this looks like from the student's perspective in a moment. But first, I'm going to scroll up to the top a little bit. If you mouse over one of your questions, you'll see these six dots. That's a handlebar. If you click that and drag it, you can move your question around your form so that you can uh, control things a little better that way. Another feature is the titles. If you add a title, this will insert a kind of section header that lets you add a kind of a subheader uh, here with an additional description, some more um, some more instructions here. Uh, again, you can drag this around. And this lets you create like a, a logical um, kind of break in your quiz. With the image button, you can add an image inside of your uh, quiz. You can upload something from your computer or from your Google Drive, or you can even use the image Google search. I like this option here. When you search for something here, you will find that these are images that are all copyright available. Uh, this looks like some sort of mecha platypus. Let's pick that. That's obvious. Uh, again, when you have something inside of your uh, form, you can uh, give it a title and then you can drag it around. So here I'm going to put this near the top just to kind of set the mood for the quiz and that will become part of your quiz. So you can insert pictures very quickly from there. Similar, you can insert a video. So if you click on the video icon, you can search for a video or if you know the address of a video, if you have one in mind already, you can copy and paste the address here. Uh, search works pretty well. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick and we'll search for something from National Geographic and you can insert that directly into your quiz here. Like other elements, you can use the handlebar to drag it around. You can give it a title. And that's a real easy way to insert videos into your quizzes. Let's see how this looks from the student perspective. Scroll all the way to the top and from there you will find an icon that looks like an eye. That is a preview icon. Click the preview. That will open up a new window in your Chrome browser and you will see what the students will see. Yeah, the first thing you're going to notice is a disclaimer indicating that the email address will be captured for this quiz. So when the students take the quiz, one of the fields you're going to capture in addition to all of the quiz questions will be their email address. If you scroll down a little bit, uh, we have our image, we have our video, and here we have our multiple choice question. This is what it looks like if we have a uh, text field, a short answer. This is a long answer. So when you click on this, you can put a lot more information into it, multiple lines. Whereas, whereas with, the, uh, with the first question, you can't put multiple lines in. You can only put a single short answer in there. With the drop down box, we'll see that this has a drop down of all of the options. With this, this is our upload. We can click on this add file. That would allow the students to upload from their Chromebook or from their computer or even their phone. And then under my drive, they can import something that has been uh, uploaded to their drive already. This question is a multiple choice checkbox. So you can see the squares allow them to enter multiple options here. Uh, we have our section header here. This is the slider so they can pick from one to five. This is the grid selection that we had before. Each row is effectively a different question and each column is the option to select for that question here. So they have to select one option here. If they select a different option, it'll deselect the previous one that they selected. And then down here, we have the checkbox grid. So with this, they can select multiple options here. Uh, if you scroll down here, we've got the date time box. So if they click the icon here, they get the date picker. If they come over here, they can enter a date and time. And down here for the time field, they can enter in separate times. And then we have a submit button. After they submit the quiz, we have a view score option. Here you can see your point total at the top. I didn't answer all the questions, so I didn't do very well. And if I scroll down, it shows me uh, how I did on the quiz. So if I did right, it gives me the feedback. If I did wrong, it indicates that I got it wrong. But remember, for this type of question, we can't really auto correct that. So it shows the triple dots here instead of showing me a zero or a one or a 10. Um, so that's something that has to be graded later. So this is what it looks like from the student perspective when they answer a quiz. So now I'm back on my quiz. Because I submitted a response, I have a response entered. 
I click on the response tab, I now have some interesting information, some insights about how students are filling out this quiz. If I scroll down, I can see some high level information, number of people that responded, questions that were frequently missed. I can see an overview of how people are answering the questions. This could be helpful for knowing if in general your students are not grasping certain concepts so that can give you some insights into how you can uh, kind of focus on information. And if I go back up to the top, I see that I have this spreadsheet icon. If I click that spreadsheet icon, that will create a new Google Sheet with all of my quizzes. I click create, that will create a brand new spreadsheet. Give that a moment. For each student that submitted the form, I see all of their answers. One thing I notice is I don't see the student's email address in this quiz. I'm gonna show you in a second how to add that. But from here, you can see an overview of everybody's answers in one handy Google Sheet. Back on the quiz, if I click on the gear icon, here under settings, these are the settings for this quiz. The first one I can see here is the collect email addresses. I select checking that. That way we can collect the email address and have it included in the spreadsheet. Their email address is still captured as a side effect of it being a quiz, but this allows the email address to be included in the Google Sheet. Under the quiz tab, we have a couple different options here. One is to make it a quiz. We wanna make sure that's enabled. That's what gives us all these quiz features. This is how we control if the quiz has access to answer keys. The locked mode for Chromebooks, if all of your students are taking uh, the quiz on a school issued Chromebook, I would suggest you could turn this on. And what that does is they are not able to open other tabs. They're only able to view this one tab. Um, this doesn't work if you're trying to do some sort of open book quiz. If you want students to have access to resources in the quiz, then they're gonna need to either have it embedded in the, uh, in the quiz itself. So like if you have some sort of shared classroom notes or a video or a website you want them to have as a reference, you have to embed it inside of the quiz. If you have locked turned on, otherwise they won't be able to access notes or other resources. Uh, releasing the grade, if all of the questions on your quiz are self-grading, uh, for example, the paragraph answers aren't self-grading, uh, but if everything is self-grading, go ahead and turn on uh, release grade after immediate submission. All right, now I'm gonna click cancel. I want to clean up this response. I wanna remove that before I ship it to the students. I'm gonna click the ellipses menu and then click delete all responses. I just wanna clear out my one sample response so I don't get it confused with others later. And now I have zero responses. I have the quiz exactly how I want it. And now I'm ready to submit this quiz to my students. I'm gonna close this close this spreadsheet and from here I see I'm back on my assignment now I'm ready to ship it to my students from here I'm gonna click the assign button or you can always assign it later if you want to schedule it um, later on in the week uh, but for now I'm gonna go ahead and assign it and now my students will receive it in their Google Classroom stream they'll receive an email notice letting them know that it's there and it'll show up in their to-do list Thanks for watching. In the suggested videos, you're gonna see a playlist for more Google Classroom tutorials. Uh, you might find some information there that helps. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Let me know if I can help.